In this lecture, we'll be taking a look at how we can create our React app and then connect it with Azure serverless application that we have been developing till now. So the first thing that we will be doing is we'll be making use of this boilerplate, which is available on GitHub called Facebook slash create react app. If you scroll down a bit, you'll notice that the command to create your app is provided over here. For this, you also need to have Node.js installed. So please go ahead on this website node.js.org and install it on your operating system. Once done, you can obviously make use of this boilerplate to create your React application like we have done over here in our case. So I'll quickly take you through this. Ignore the file upload.html that's provided in this one. But when you will be creating your app using the boilerplate that we just now discussed, you'll get this structure. Here you open package.json file and inside that you will find dependencies appearing over here. The first one that you see is for authenticating the user, the B2C authentication that we have implemented will be executed using this library. So that's provided on Node.js package as well as you can see over here, npm. And this is the readme of it. That's Azure AD B2C is an identity provider covering social and enterprise logins. And this is how you install it. Now, other things that are there in dependencies is Axios, which is used for making Ajax calls. And then we have Bootstrap, JWT, Token Decoder, and then the usuals like React Bootstrap, DOM, Router DOM, Scripts, and Script Checkout. And this one, Stripe Checkout, is used for making payments to Stripe. So that is the dependency list that we have. After this, I would like you to take you to the SRC directory. Now here, if you see, there are two things. The public one basically contains the compiled code. And this is the index.html file which gets loaded by default. So if I just scroll it down a bit, you'll notice all these headers, title, head, body, and inside the body, this is the ID root and inside this the application gets loaded and then these are the script files. Now if I take you to the SRC directory here the first file that you will notice is index.js. Now the index.js has got this line which is referring to the root ID that was mentioned in the public index.html. So this is the ID I'm talking about. Now inside this the react basically renders this app component now this app component is actually coming from this app and here we have also included the authentication now the other urls that we are making use of the instance as i mentioned comes over here so this is the azure adb to c tenant url and then we have the tenant name this comes under the server. So if I show you, go to home, adb2c, this is the tenant URL I'm talking about. So that's what we have mentioned over here. Then the sign-in policy workflow, application ID, we have already mentioned from where we can get the application ID. In the user flow, you will get this. In the app registrations, you will get this one. Then cache location, scope, will keep to profile and open ID, and the redirect URL, Remember we had initially configured it to be jwt.ms, but now we have to specify this. That's the URL for our website, static website. So now if I take you to the home directory, and here, if I go to this, did you apply a storage account? You'll notice that's the URL for our website. Going to static website, and this is the URL I'm talking about that we have over here as the redirect URL. Okay. And then we have validate authority set to false. So this is the initial authentication that we need to do. Once done, let me take you to the app.js file which gets called from this page index.js. So the app.js basically comprises of two important sections, home page and members area. Remember, we are developing a user login based website. So there will be a home section, which is whenever any users are coming without being logged in, they will see the initial screen. That's the home page. And once they have logged in based on their type, they will be redirected to the members area. 
so that's what we are doing over here by default the app loads and then here we have shown the home page as well as the sign in so on clicking sign in we are saying authentication dot required and then to access this members area we are saying that authentication is required so whenever anybody is not logged in they will be redirected to sign in otherwise they will be going to the members area so that's how the app is created after this we'll be going to homepage and members area let's go to homepage.js first and here if you see default state is created over here which consists of status messages all the jobs all companies whether user is logged in or not uh, the current users email id all user data user type and logged in users jobs and company profile see these are all the states that we can have in this application and after this we have this component did mount so whenever the component is mounted we are basically initializing the page hiding and showing some of the divs and then setting up states like user type 1 and 2 1 is for candidate 2 is for company and then the job type so that's how it is appearing right now so if I show you it in running condition and to run this application all you need to do is run npm start you can see I have executed this command npm start and currently this is running over here so that's the home page being shown to you where anybody can come and look for a job and if they want to create their account they can click on the sign in button now over here we have separate functions like if someone is looking for a job what kind of job it is like if it's part-time or full-time if it's part-time then we are showing some other values as well and if it's full-time then we are hiding and showing some other values similarly we are talking about job industry if it's small business then we are showing some content if not then we are hiding it now over here the first thing that we do is whenever we are making any api calls you can see that we have this api over here now we need to go to api.js first and here you can see I have defined this as a constant the base URL is the URL which is the URL to our API and then here we are saying this is the base URL and these are the headers that we need to pass so the subscription key is required for each call that we are making now if I go back to our home.js page here you can see the first one is for making a payment stripe payment that we talked about the other methods that are there get user type so this identifies whether logged in user is a company or an individual get company jobs get company profile get candidate profile and all such methods that we define in our function app are being called from here applying for a job getting the logged in candidates job so you can see that we are using axios to get this data the get method is there the header is being passed and here we are saying auth.get token and the auth is coming from the auth library that we have over here so auth.get token similarly we have other functions called over here get job save company save candidates profile user process job post job logout and then we are rendering this showing it to the user based on the user type whether they are companies or candidates and here you see the initial screen so if the users are not logged in they will be able to see the job description and location and once they click on the button the job get jobs method will be called and the jobs matching to their search criteria will be shown here's how the job search result is shown so we are showing job title short description if it's full time then we are showing this if not then the other thing comes up and they can also go ahead and apply for a job if they are logged in and for that we are passing the job id job industry whether a small business will or not all those kind of information is then shown so that's how this whole page is created and shown to the user similarly we have another page called members area now the members page is basically used for sign in so if i click over here you'll notice that we are going to be redirected to the tenant url that you can see over here and here you can provide your credentials to log in once you will do that you will be basically redirected to the website here 
So what basically members page is doing is basically it's redirecting you to the tenant URL or ADB to C URL and from there when you're successfully logged in you're being redirected back to the home page and the home page then identifies whether you're logged in or not and if you are logged in you are shown your email ID for instance if I go here and click on sign in and there you go you're logged in you have these links appearing now so that's the role of member.js file here that's the members area so here remember we had jwt.ms now we need to update this URL to the actual website URL that we have mentioned in our index.js file as a redirect URI so this is the URL that we will be now putting over there so let's copy this from here and let's go back and instead of this we can have this updated and that is all that we need to do over here apart from this click on save before going to other link and then you go to overview and to home under azure active directory and the domain name that we were mentioning over here as instance basically comes from this one so here i've created another domain so serverlessjobs.microsoft.com and the instance name that we are referring over here basically comes from this user flow so you can see here i have created another one just to demonstrate you how to create a new one so you can just copy this like this one b2clogin.com and after that forward slash tfp that's what you need to put so that's how we get the instance tenant and the redirect url has now been applied updated so here as soon as user logs in you can see that this is being pushed to the index page so as soon as the redirect url then appears from the adb2c url the user is pushed to the home page and there we check whether the email is there in the response or not that's in the jwt token or not apart from that we have also created this file auth which i was mentioning earlier to log in and log out users so inside auth.js you can see that there's a method which checks whether user is logged in or not if they are logged in we are getting the access token on clicking log out they are being logged out and here we have the get token method which returns the access token and then we are also having another method called current user which is basically using a jwt decode library to decode the access token and then return the email that is part of the jwt token so that's how the whole application is working now end to end i hope you have learned a bit from this course on how to create a react application how to make api calls using azure serverless infrastructure